Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Walking. I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. Hello, how's it going? <laughs> Good luck on the grinding if, as uh, most people are still lotto grinding. I'm here to talk about the GSSR, which is coming at uh, the beginning of New Year's. If you don't know this about fake Grand Order, they always do it where there's always a GSSR two times a year where it is one is during anniversary and one is during new year's and both of them are paid so i kind of want to talk about the banners because on this one there's going to be multiple banners um i'm going to give my thoughts on them kind of tell you not tell you specifically which one's a summon on but kind of give advice i really don't like telling people hey summon on this because you get this because i think Fago is a game of characters and sometimes a character being a character you love is more important than a character that is a character that is strong but Anyway, that's going to be today's video. Hope you like it. If you do, feel free to leave a like, comment down below, tell me what your plans on the GSSR are, and um, subscribe to me if you want some more. So again, like I said beforehand, the GSSR is paid. What does that mean? It means only quartz that you pay for can be used to summon. But at the same time, not all quartz are paid quartz. I don't know why they did this, but it is what it is on this one. There's a thing in there called bonus quartz, where technically you're paying for, what, 24 quarts, but then they're giving you a bonus 24. So technically you do not have um, 48 paid quarts, you only have the 24. That's usually what it means. It's really weird, but that's how they, that's how they kind of uh, see it that way. It's weird. I wish they wasn't GSS, I, I wish it wasn't limited premium, but hey, it is what it is. I can't specifically go over every single one of these units, but I'm going to do my best. So we have Saber, we have Archer, we have Lancer, we have Rider, we have Caster, we have Assassin, we have Berserker, I have Extra, and we have Extra too. I'm going to try and talk about only the most standout of units. And in some banners, all units are kind of equal in terms of what they are. So in terms of being equal of what they are, we have Saber. The weakest one here is either, uh, either Arthur over here or Shiki. It kind of depends. I actually think Shiki is maybe a little bit worse, but she has insta-death, so there's maybe... I don't know. But both of them are kind of on the weak side on here. And the strongest for here is obviously um, Castor Nero, Musashi, Okita, and Astolfo. And the rest of them are... Um, the rest of them, which is the other two. <laughs> Uh, Sigurd and Benny uh, Enma are very good on specific um, events or fights, I which I should say. Benny Enma being better than uh, Sigurd, I'd say, in my personal opinion. That's how I feel. Very, very. It's a it's a f tough thing because you're gonna get one of these units guaranteed, but the unit the banner is kind of too big and it's too varied to be kind of worth it, in my opinion. Like you have to really care about one of these savers that you're willing to risk it, because it's just like like I said, it's a one in seven, one through three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's a one in eight chance of getting actually the unit you want, and in some of these banners you just have a better chance of getting someone you want or a very good unit. And speaking of that. It's Archer. So on the Archer one, all these units are good, except for, again, um, he's the weakest of them. Not to say he's bad, he's just the weakest. He just doesn't compare to Super Orion. To be fair, none of these units compare to Super Orion. I think the one that comes closest is Saber Summer over here. Um, she would probably be my second pick, and then it would be Jean, and then it would actually be a tie between Jean and Ishtar. It kind of depends on, in the current state of JP, where you have a more Buster Servants, um, more Buster Support, Ishtar probably climbs up a little bit higher, same thing goes for Gilgamesh. But in NA, where we don't yet, it's a little bit of a different story. That's what I'm going to say right now, before someone comes to try and attack me on this, because it's very easy to. But in general, I would say you have a... 3, 4, 5, 6... You have a 5 and 6 shot of getting someone great, and then the jackpot is Super Orion. He's just that insanely good. I can tell you that right now for free. Um, next, for... Um, Lancer, I think this is actually one of the best chances, because this gives you a chance of getting Irish Coggle and a, four, uh, a 1 in 4 chance, which you will never have better odds of getting her than on this banner. It is insane. I think this is your best chance of getting her if you love her. 
Um, because she is a Renfei, she is super well loved. And in general, she's a very cute unit. So a lot of people love her. You will never get a better chance in terms of GSSR than on here. I actually don't know that in terms of some of the other future ones because it's been a bit. There might be a better one coming later. But in terms of North America, great great banner to try for her. And if you do miss her, you get one of these fantastic women who are, I think she's the best one in general out of all of these four, by the way. Then you have Tamamo, but it's again, assuming you don't get Erish. She's very good here. She gets a bunny outfit later, which is fantastic. You get the Tamamo Summer, the Lancer, who is very good in certain challenge quests and is pretty solid overall. And because she's a summer unit, she will always be good around summertime. And you have Brunhilde, who I think has had the most buffs out of these because she kind of needed them the most. But she's still, I'd say, pretty dang solid, in my opinion, on her. If you're a big fan of reuniting people, it's nice to have them with Sigurd and Brunhilde. I was never able to get either one of them, so I can not reunite them. If I actually had Sigurd, I would pull on this banner just because it'd be a chance of getting her. Next, we have Ryder. Ryder, I think the the jackpot is obviously Lily over here, but a little bit more misses on this one. It's really going to come down to your preference. I think some people, most people actually do not like Iskandar the way he plays, and I think it's fair because... You, he kind of needs a little bit more. He has plenty of damage on his side. The problem is, is that he doesn't have an, an, an NPD, anything. He doesn't have anything that gives him like 50% like Drake does, for example. And if he had that, he'd be more than solid. He'd be one of the best writer, especially now in JP. But for most people, it would be a miss. Lily's the best one on here. Reigns is going to depend on how much you want her as a support or how much you like her as a character. She is extremely good. I actually really like uh, Saber Summer Alter over here. But she kind of it fits into a very specific niche. And if you're not down for exploiting that niche, you maybe won't find her as useful. Because she is technically kind of like a support unit who can also deal a lot of single target damage. She's a support unit who can also be a damage dealer, basically. Ivan is just pure damage. It's pretty nice, actually. I really like Ivan. But in terms of the super jackpot, it's Vinci. And then the rest of them, it's all going to depend on your playstyle and who you like. Like, not everyone's going to be excited about getting Ivan, <laughs> for example. And But to be fair, not everyone's going to be excited for getting Cyber Summer Alter either. But there are people, and that kind of fluctuates it a little bit. So I think it's a little bit of the... Probably the one with the most variety in it. Because it's actually a very small pool. But the units and their use and... The people who love the character, it all is kind of varied. Like, I love Iskandar, by the way. I have him pretty much close to max, I think. I just need... Uh, the only thing that's making stopping me from pulling the bullet is I need him to get buffed. <laughs> that's the only thing. Next, speaking of wild variety, the obvious jackpots here are Scotty and Merlin. And the rest of these is kind of all dependent on a lot of factors. Like, I like Vinci, and I like... actually like all these units, to be honest. Except for Ilya. I think Ilya is the one where she might be the weakest in my eyes on this one. But in terms of single target buster uh, casters, there's not a lot of them. Not a lot of them. In terms of one who's extremely strong, she's one of the stronger ones. So she's good to have for that. But in terms of jackpot, these two are the support units. These are the ones most people always want. These are the ones you always see on friends lists. So with that being said, most people want them. So... But the problem is that it's a two, one, two, three, four, five, six, two out of six chance. And let me tell you right now, if you have a Scotty and you're looking for a Merlin, or if you have a Merlin and you're looking for a Scotty, it is a one in six chance because you do not want either one of these NP2. An NP2 Merlin, useless. NP2 Scotty, more useless. <laughs> so this one definitely has the most risk but highest reward, I would say. Uh, next, we have Assassin. The big jackpots here are Kama and Hassan, but the rest of them, again, kind of being like that, it's, your mileage may vary on some of them. Some of them are shine more than the others for sure. I would really like it if my girl Cleo got a buff. That'd be super nice. But these two, this is the cool thing. So if you're summing here and you're trying, if you have a King Hassan and you're trying to get a Kama, but you get an MP2 King Hassan, you're in a little bit of a better place because an MP2 King Hassan is much more useful than an MP2 Merlin because he's an actual damage dealer. So having more NP damage on him is always nice. Same thing kind of goes for Kama. If you're going here, I think most people actually would be summoning for a Kama. And I think most people would also be trying to get a maybe an MP2 of Kama, if I'm being honest. Um, if you're trying for that, I wish you the best of luck. 
This one's going to be a tough one, though. It's definitely going to be a super tough one. <laughs> Just because some of these other units, it's gonna, it, your mileage may vary. Like, I would be pretty happy if I got a shooting, but not everyone's going to be happy. Most people would not be happy if they got a Semiramis off of this, but I would be happy if I got Semiramis. So it kind of really, again, mileage may vary, but in terms of good units, these two are your, your go-to jackpots. Next. Oh. Man. So they have not returned Arjuna Altar since his banner. He's only ever had one banner in the entire game, and I think the reason is they realized that they fucked up, and they made him too good, and now they don't want to return him. There's a Buster meta going on now, and he's definitely, like, fantastic for it. The problem is it almost, it, it, if you did not pull in that original banner or get lucky on GSSR, you just don't have him. There's no real chance of him returning at the moment. The one time people thought he was going to return is for the rerun of Christmas with Summer um, Karna. And guess what? They canceled it. So <laughs> there was no fave. No one has any fave on him returning. This is maybe the most people I would guess are going for a June Altar and saying if I get Musashi, I'll be very happy. Because I think Musashi in the arts meta that we're about to enter is going to be very useful. But you basically have a 2 out of 6 chance of getting a jackpot and a 1 in 6 chance of getting the super jackpot because again he is the he is easily one of the rarest units to get you definitely would want him um whew, but it's tough because if you don't get him man Hijikata like the reason I'm not summoning on this even though I really would like a copy of him or a dupe of a Musashi is that I have an MP2 Hijikata if I got him MP3 I think I would be it'd be over, and it's a shame because I would also like, or I would like a Juno Altar. I would like Kentoki. I would like Mama. I'd like Musashi. I wouldn't mind Mysterious Hair with X Altar. I don't really use her all that much. I have her, but so basically for me personally, these two are a dead unit. But and so that would make it a four out of six. But for most people, I would say it's a two out of six because, yeah. And it's really unfair how much he kind of outclasses everyone else here. They need to keep buffing Mama. They tried for a while. They really did give her a lot of buff post Arjuna Altar. They really don't want to admit that they have screwed up. Like, they gave her two buff post Arjuna Altar. She probably needs a little bit more, if I'm being 100% honest with you. Keep busting. Keep buffing her. Because maybe if they buff her enough, they'll finally return him. Next. This banner, I think, is actually pretty solid to pull for. Obviously, the super mega jackpot is Space Ishtar, who is fantastic in a lot of different ways and for many different metas. Um, can be used in multiple ways because she has an effect that basically changes her NP type. And she's an Avenger, and she is easily the strongest Avenger, especially once Castoria comes out. And let's see, I believe there are eight units in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, there's more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, eight units. Um, I think the biggest dud here is obviously Nobu. She eventually does get really good, but the problem is, is that she gets a buff here, a buff there. No buff to the Noble Phantasm, but... She's the only unit that comes to- actually, no, I think Ilya also got a similar buff like this with Chloe, with Chloe's buff. She got a buff where basically they created an entire unit whose entire life's goal is to buff Nobunaga. And then die. That's all he does. It's kind of crazy. Um, but because it requires so much setup, I would easily say that she's maybe the one most people would not want. In terms of these, I would probably say it's going to vary to person to person, but I would say in general, all these units are extremely good. Like for Challenge Quest, the Emperor and Sherlock Holmes, fantastic. For AoE Buster units who are Ruler, you got the Bunny and you got the, the Amakasu. For Quick uh, AoE, you got Dantes, who is easily one of my favorites. Jolter is going to be dependent on how much you love Jolter as a character, because I actually think she needs a buff now. Um, She's very old, and the only thing they've ever buffed is her NP, and I think it's time for them to probably buff one of her skills, if I'm being honest. But in general, I would still consider her pretty solid, because she still deals a lot of damage. The problem is, is that she's just not as good as... She doesn't deal as much damage as Super Orion, for example. And Super Orion, on disadvantage, 
whoops the shit out of Lancer units with his Buster stuff fully built out. So think about that when you're thinking, like, does she really need a buff of some kind? I would say yes. And finally, here's the last banner. A 1 in 7 chance. Uh, not a 1 in 7 chance. I actually think it's kind of the same, where I think the weakest here is obviously um, Okita Alter, but she's such a fan favorite that most people would love to have her. So she's kind of a um, 7 out of 7 for this one, honestly, because you could get Melt. Kiara isn't as strong as the other ones, but with enough buffs, because she gets a lot of them. I think she's buffed in almost every single aspect. She's buffed enough that she makes her a pretty good unit. Um, King Protea is a pretty fun unit to use. Melt's super good. BB Summer is really fun. Abby's very good. Hokusai is very good. In general, I would say it's a solid all-arounder where, in general, if you're pulling for one of these, I think you're going to be pretty happy with who you get. And if you're someone who's pulling on this who super hates one of these units, I don't think I trust you. So, it's just the way it's going to be, unfortunately. So if you disagree with me, fine. But I would say in general, 7 on 7 on this one. The problem is, is that none of these units compare to the big super mega jackpots, which are Space Ishtar, Arjuna Alter, I would say Kama, and Super Orion. Those are your big units. Whether or not you summon on them, I think it actually depends on looking at your box, looking at what you have, and looking at what you believe your luck is. Like, if you're someone who just wants an easy win, summoning on Lancer is your best bet on getting an easy win. If you're someone who wants to risk it for the biscuit, you don't have any support casters, I would say go for um, caster. If you're someone who really likes <laughs> comma, summon on Assassin. If you're someone who really, 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 really wants the most OP unit in the world and you're in love with Arjuna Altar, holy shit, summon on the GSSR. Your GSSR is your only chance of ever getting Arjuna Altar. You just need to accept it. And this is your only chance of getting him. So yeah, those are my thoughts on this. I hope it was helpful in some way. If you have some more questions about who you should pull, feel free to leave some stuff down below and we can kind of talk about it. And I'll gladly kind of walk you through it and maybe other people will give you their opinions as well. You never know. But that's it for this video, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. I I, this was actually my second recording of it to make it better. The first one was, I think, over 30 minutes long. It was just too much info. So, until next time, everyone, you have a good day, and I am going to go get a drink of water. Peace out.